Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the uh, the meeting for the February graphic novel, the month club for the kids club. Uh, the book is Nightlights. Um, I'm Brian Hibbs with my wonderful co-host Ben. Hello. Hello. Uh, and our fabulous guest Lorena Alvarez, who came here all the way Hello. from Colombia. Hi guys. Pretty Hi. excited. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out today. Um, I'm I'm thinking you all like the book, yeah? yeah. Good book, yeah. Fantastic, sweet. Um, do you guys do you guys just because I'm, I'm curious? Do any of you guys know where Colombia is? Yeah. Um, in South America. It's in South America, yeah. Do you know where in South America it is? It's 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 at the very very top of of South America. A long distance she came. Long distance. <laughs> um, cool. Do you wanna do you wanna start a question or? Yours, dude. Okay. Well, actually, you have a presentation. Let's so let's do the presentation. Oh. Okay. Yeah. She's got, she's got, she's got some video. She's got some process. <laughs> I know. Okay, so um, first, ho hello. Um, I'm so happy to meet you. I usually talk to grown-ups, so this is a really good new experience for me to meet you all. And well, I'm an illustrator, and what I do mostly are children's books. And usually, I receive a text or the instructions for someone else, an editor or a writer and I had to do the drawings. So uh, it is a really cool thing because I can give uh, like a new point of view of a different story. And well, this is most of my work. Uh, next. I really like uh, when I, I can work with writers, uh, with people who have their own stories. And uh, well, for example, uh, this was for a book about a squirrel who likes to travel all around the world and solve mysteries. And this book was about New Zealand. So I had to look uh, how uh, photos of New Zealand and the landscapes, uh, the plants they have there, the animals, uh, how the, uh, the mountains look like, for example. And it was a really good thing. I really like my job. I really like being an illustrator because I can learn a lot of things. And this one is one of my favorite illustrations for that book. It's a baobab. A baobab is a very big tree. And in the story, it's like a wise old man who has all the secrets of the culture. And the squirrel has to help him to tell the others what, uh, what was the story of New Zealand. Um, these are uh, illustrations for a very, very classic book. Uh, I bet you have read it, The Wizard of Oz. Um, and it was a really special project for me because at that time I was living here in the US. I was living in Arkansas. And many of the landscapes are big fields, and the forest helped me to find inspiration for this book. I really like it. I really like the story. So next. This is Emerald Sea, one of my favorite parts in the book. I really like uh, the fact that the Wizard of Oz is not really a wizard. <laughs> and I found that really funny. And next. Um, I really like uh, to draw nature. I really like to draw animals. Uh, when I was at school, biology was my uh, favorite subject. And I really like uh, to see how things grow. Seeds turn into plants. And that inspires me a lot to draw. Next. Oh, and this is the last one for the Wizard of Oz. Um, when they get to this porcelain <laughs> town when, where everything is too fragile and they have to be careful, 
uh, it was a really hard illustration to make because uh, the first version of it, when I do, when I did the sketch, it was like uh, normal small houses, and it didn't look fragile enough. So I made them like uh, teacups and teapots, so they would look like you have to be careful to walk around them. I also do toys. I think that uh, Illustrate is not only drawing or, or being in front of your computer, but also you can you can do things. You can sew, you can uh, play with um, Play-Doh, for example, and you can bring a, a 2D image, an image in a paper, to a 3D object, something you can touch, you can play with. So these are my characters. Um, these are plants. I really like flowers. The first one is a sunflower. The second one is a rose. And the third one is a lotus. Um, I really like to play with that, with the idea that things have uh, uh, spirits inside. So yeah, those are my characters. Um, I. I'm also part of a puppetry group with, a, with some friends I really care about. And I learned a lot uh, working with them. Uh, sometimes we think that drawing is a very lonely thing, some, something you can do in your room. But it also, I think you can share with others. And it is important to share it. So well, we have we make these puppets and we uh, we write the plays and we try to rehearse every now and then. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a cool video here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell them a little bit what we're waiting for? Oh, of about? course. Um, I've also made a little bit of uh, animation. Oh, well, to be more precise, I've collaborated in animation projects, uh, doing characters and painting backgrounds. And in this case, we also wrote this study together with my husband. He's an animator, and he's also a, a, an artist. So we did this together. It's a music video. Uh, my sister law plays the cello in that song uh, and that's how we we found it it, it is a beautiful song uh, the singer is amazing and i really hope you like it <laughs> if any of you guys want to come in and sit down on the floor up here that's that's fine if you want <laughs>
If you'd like to pull in, sit down on the floor over here, around, fill in corners. Um, I know it's a little a little tight today. I had more, more kids than we're, we're used to having come, so pull on in. Um, that's fantastic. Obviously, the music comes first on something like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I also started to make my own to think about my own projects, my own ideas. So I started to draw these characters with, uh, with a black pencil very quickly on my sketch pad. Oh, next. And I found out that um, writing is also a very fun thing to do, to imagine uh, new situations and new characters. Next. And I started to draw myself in different situations to uh, to draw the things I like to do. I like to dance by myself, and I, I really like music. And I also started to draw some people that I found interesting. And uh, this guy, for example, he was a he was a biker. He was in a gang, and he uh, ride his bike all over the country. And when he got older. Uh, he decided to be a magician in a medieval fair. Uh, he was a really cool guy, so so I wanted to draw him. Next. And I also started to do this small comics about uh, the things that I found funny every day, how I can not drive. I'm a very bad driver, and <laughs> I've been trying several times to get my license. And the second one is how, well, I'm a graphic designer, and how I can name a lot of bands that I like, a lot of music, musicians, uh, but I cannot uh, name a single designer. <laughs> and not because I, I don't care about, but it's just, uh, it's close, music is closer. And well, um, I went to a Catholic school, um, it's, it's a pretty common thing in Colombia. I mean, if you, if your parents can afford it, or if your parents are religious, they would send you to Catholic school. And there are a lot of schools run by nuns in where I live, and many of them were for girls. So I studied with girls most of my life, and I started to to think about how curious was uh, that place. And the stories, the creepy stories we, we used to tell each other. Uh, we had these horror stories about the nuns and about uh, the, the labs, the biology labs, the weird things they kept there, the animals in the jars. So, and I started to write about it and think about it. And, well, this is, <laughs> I was thinking about what the nuns had under their veils. It was a very, we, we never saw them without their veils, so we, we started to make jokes about it. <laughs> and I found out that it was a good idea to share my experience with other girls who, who went to Catholic school like me. So I made this workshop, and, well, it was, a very fun thing. We we talked a lot and we had a really good time. It was five days and next at the end we had to make a, a small a, a project about it. Next. Some of them uh, draw their uniforms and talk about it, how they didn't like to wear them because they felt like uh, we all look the same and that's not very interesting. And some of them wrote about the horror stories we used to write up. Next. And meanwhile, I was writing more and more stories 
uh, working with uh, more complex subjects, complex topics, I guess. Next. Uh, this is a story, for example, uh, I saw once this little baby bird on the street, it, it was dead, it, maybe it was trying to fly and he couldn't, he fell on the floor, that was really sad, so I wrote a story about it. Oh, and this is uh, the, very, the very first drawings I made, I liked. It was originally a uh, six pages story, very short. And well, I had this idea of, of making a small book with, with four or three stories. So I made the project, I wrote a little uh, statement about me, about what I wanted to do with the book, and I sent it to the publisher, to Nobra. And they said yes. And I was so excited. I was really happy. And like they brought me, they say, "Okay, we we really love your project, but it would be a good idea to take this very short story and make it a 54 pages book." <laughs> and I, I didn't know how to feel then when I, when I got the news. Uh, so this is how I usually write. Uh, when I had the story ready, uh, I started to, when I had to make it bigger, right? So I started to make these uh, doodles uh, to, to write notes. Uh, at the beginning, uh, it's, a, it's a bit messy because I'm trying to find the path to write the story, to the path of the... Um, well, the time flow to, to say. Um, well, I, I take all of this and I, just, I, I keep writing and I keep cleaning my drawings. And then next, <laughs> I get to this, to the character. Uh, she looks a little bit like me when I was that age with the funny ponytails and the oversized skirt my mom somehow though I was going to be very tall, but no. <laughs> so she bought me like really big clothes. <laughs> and next. And when, um, when I have all these drawings, all these notes, the text, I, I take them, like I said, and I start to organize them in, lay in a layout. The layout helped me to see how the story is going through, right? And well, this is the drawing I make before this, before the coloring and the inking. Uh, I really wanted to keep uh, the atmosphere I remember when I went to school. The big rooms with um, the big blackboard. The, um, they used to, to use chalk. Now they use like markers and well, even screens. Back then it was just a blackboard with lots and lots of chalk. Next. The playground places I used to, to play at school. Well, well, I wanted also to. Um, to keep all the things that girls used to do at school, not only talking and being seated, but playing and being funny, being silly, uh, being rude to each other sometimes. And, well, this is my favorite double page. <clears throat> Nightlight, uh, the name idea and the whole idea comes from a very early memory I have. Uh, when I was little, I used to uh, imagine, oh, well, uh, you can see it actually. And in the dark, you can see like little dots, little color dots that you can pick up and play with them. I used to think that. And, and I always like to draw. So yeah, that was like the main idea of the book. And next. And obviously, um, 
bringing all those memories back, it was a really good experience. And it helped me a lot to complete the book, to make uh, a nice character. I think I'm really happy with it. And well, that's it. That's the, the story of Nightlight. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any like training or are you self-taught? Um, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I always wanted to, to do something related to drawing and art. And when I got in, uh, in high school, I started to look into a career. <laughs> and I found out that uh, the only place I could learn how to be an illustrator or an animator would be at graphic design. Uh, and I chose a public university which was a really good decision, I guess. And I, I went to this career and as a graphic designer. Uh, by then, uh, there weren't many illustration schools or animation schools. Now there are a few, which is awesome. But uh, I could learn not only from the teachers, but, on, but also from my peers and from people who were already doing illustration. One of the things you, you we talked about yesterday was that um, uh, in Colombia at the time that it was a very male dominated mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, field that almost all of your peers were yeah, all guys. were all guys. Uh -huh. So what was, what was that like being a woman in that in that you know who wants to express yourself? Oh well, it was uh, sometimes well. Guys were always very respectful, I, I mean, my peers, but sometimes the teachers, they say things like, okay, uh, girls can do the homework, but they are not very creative. And it was uh, very intimidating because I started to think, okay, so how they, are they evaluating my work as just someone who does homework, who does the things right, or someone who can do more? And I started to talk with uh, some female teachers, and it was uh, it was really good because they were like uh, fighting to find a place for girls and women in, in the faculty, and I found that uh, I could be a very creative person, and I could take uh, all my experience as a girl to to feed it, to feed my ideas, to. And when you when you went on to, as a professional illustrator, did you did you face those same kind of barriers, or or did that stop after school? Maybe uh, sometimes uh, many editors think that because you are a girl, you can only do like flowers and uh, unicorn and pink sure. things, which are those are not bad at all. But it's uh, they are not the only things you can do. You can also draw robots and spaceships and, mm -hmm. and think about technology and science, which I think are very important. So do you have any uh, particular artists that inspire you? Oh, many, many. Um, when I started to, to read comics seriously, uh, the Hernandez brothers were very important because they had this beautiful female characters and the situation were like crazy and the drawings are amazing and i also started to read uh, more female writers more female comic book writers like uh, alison bechdel and some uh authors in colombia like power paola yeah how long did this book take you oh like um well, from the very, very beginning, from the six page story, it was like, uh, well, like three years. Yeah. Now that I think about it, finishing it was like uh, one and a half year. Uh, like dealing meanwhile with coming back to Colombia and working again, getting everything settled. Um, but yeah, from the beginning, it was like three years almost. Do you want to talk a little bit maybe about some of the, the challenges of going from that six-page story mm -hmm. to making it a 54-page story? Because yeah. that's that's kind of a big leap, right? You're, it's what, five times? No, mm -hmm. more than that. Almost ten times the number yeah. of pages. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, 
at first I was like really, I was terrified <laughs> by the idea, but um, then I, I thought that it was going to be a really great opportunity to draw the things that I wanted to draw and that I couldn't before and while working on the story. So it was like finding a balance between those two things, between being like this uh, illustrator full of ideas and wanting to fill all the pages with drawings, but at the same time, uh, keeping a good story, keeping the rhythm, the interest, the tension. And well, uh, thinking about uh, the, uh, my school, and doing the workshop uh, with these girls and women was a really good idea because it helped me to give some background to the story and to the character. Now she goes to school, now she has some peers to talk with, uh, she has to, she has teachers, she has, she has to do the, the, her homework, sorry. And it helped me to uh, to give like a base for all the fantasy and all the creatures and all the dreams she had. Yeah. Um, you were talking earlier. Actually, it may have been yesterday. We had we had another meeting last night with the adults for the same book. Um, uh, you were talking earlier about how at first you you didn't think of yourself as a writer. Yeah. That that you were. I think you said you were afraid of, of, of that challenge. I don't know, maybe it was like a, a leap of faith, I guess. Um, it And it was also luck, I think, because um, I found this very good publishing house, No Brow, because I really like their books. And when I found out that they were open for uh, to submissions, I just make mine. Yeah, I, I, I read, okay, you need a, a statement, you need a very short idea of what you want to do, and we need to see your portfolio. So I just made that up and, and sent it. And I wasn't like, um, I didn't think they were going to, to choose me, to choose my project. And it was a really good thing to think that uh, they bet on my project. And, they they really so potential in it. So I think I think one of the lessons that that maybe is good to take from this is that even if you're nervous about showing your art people yeah. or telling a story, that sometimes it's really worth sort of making that leap of faith um, uh, uh, because she's got a book out of it now. I mean, this is, this wouldn't have happened if she didn't have confidence in herself to be able to to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm usually pretty awkward. <laughs> Um, uh, talking is hard for me, like oh, <laughs> like being in front of an audience. But drawing comes naturally, and I found out that that would be the best way to communicate with others to uh, to have a voice. My voice comes through drawings, my my work, my art. I think so beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Um, one of the, I think the last question I want to ask before, we'll, and then we'll go to, to you guys because I'm sure you guys have some questions. At least I'm hoping you do. Um, uh, I just I loved this story yesterday of of where the names of Sandy and Morphe came from. Um, I, I thought that that was just a very charming story. So would you? Would you share oh that? yeah, uh, Sandy <laughs> is because uh, well, um, she was a secondary character in a in a different story I wrote. And she was a silent character. She didn't speak a word in the entire story, but she was always eating a sandwich. That's why she's named Sandy. <laughs> it's funny because, yeah, some people think that it, that it was because of the Sandman or something. I, I, I hope, it was, I wish it was like that, but no, it was because she was always eating a sandwich. <laughs> And Morphe, it's because uh, she can, Morphe can change her shape and she can, well, she's like a mirror of Sandy. That's why she has that name, Morphe. Like a metamorphosis. Uh-huh. Pretty good. Well, how about, how about you guys? Right up here in the front. Um, 
So what really inspired what inspired Morphe? Like what made you create her? Well, uh, Morphe represents for me uh, all the insecurities you have when you are creating something. Um, one of the hardest things for me in, in my job was to make something you love, but at the same time you have to uh, make money for, to eat. I mean, and sometimes you have to deal with people that will ask you to do things that you don't like. And, and yeah, you feel like uh, your art will become smaller and smaller. And Morphe in the story, she eats Sandy's drawings, right? And that's how I felt, like uh, this pressure to, to do always what uh, I'm asked to do, yeah. Okay, um, so if your drawings, like, didn't get accepted to no writing, um, then what would you do? Oh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Well, um, I think I would uh, look for different publishers. Uh, I mean, when uh, a publishing house says no, it doesn't mean that your work is bad. It just means that they don't have a place for your job uh, in that moment. That's what it means. So I would, would look for another publishing house and I would work a little bit harder on my uh, on my idea. Yeah. But it must have been very exciting in the first place. Oh, of course. Yeah, it was. You really took your yeah. idea. Uh -huh. That's pretty rare. Yeah. That's pretty rare. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, a lot of times you have to, it's, it's not unlike, we're going through the high school process right now. So it's not unlike applying for high schools. You've got to apply to a whole bunch of places and, mm -hmm. you know, one will, will go, you're the one that we like. Yeah, it was pretty different when I was looking for, for an agent, for someone who would help me to get uh, projects. I sent a lot of emails and I showed my portfolio all around and I got a lot of no, uh, of rejection letters, which is pretty normal. Uh, and, fr and of, I don't know, like 50, Re rejection letters, I got a yes. Yeah. yeah. We have another question. Did you have your hand up a second ago? No. no? Okay, I thought you did. Stretching. Oh, back here in the back. I want to come over to you. Um, uh, like, what happened to Sandy? Did she like, get away? Or did Morphe, like, take her to the place? I don't really, like, did that happen? Did like Morphe um, get Sandy to go? Well, uh, Sandy, well, she cannot get rid of Morphe completely. She has to give her a place in her mind because Morphe at the end is part of Sandy. And well, Sandy these times gets she, she saves herself and she makes Morphe to work for her instead. Yeah, I, think, I think maybe you, like sometimes when you have a fear, that fear, even when you overcome that fear, that fear still exists though. Yeah. You, you still have that fear, but you learn how to, to get over it and how to surpass that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Now you have a question. Awesome. Is there going to be a second book? I'm working with it, actually, yeah. But um, I don't know. Well, it wouldn't be like, uh, well, Sandy's going to be there for sure. But Morphe, maybe she will take a different form. <laughs> and she will be a different monster and she will act in a different way. That's what I want to do this time. And in a different place also. Very good. Another, you got another question? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the video was. Could you summarize that for me? Oh, uh, the animation? Uh, it was a music video. Uh, 
for uh, a very good group we found. Uh, my sister-in-law plays the cello in the song, and we really like uh, we really like the song because we felt that although uh, the lyrics doesn't have anything to do with the image, we felt that the music itself could tell a story. So we wrote this short story about this girl who is trying to find like a, a god like a, a stone god in the forest and she has to travel all the way around it to find it so yeah and i made the character and my husband made the gra the backgrounds and the animation so, <laughs> i don't know what and, and an animation thing like that takes much longer than, uh, than doing a book, yeah. oh yes of course i mean um well, we had uh, this program uh, is called After Effects, with, which helps you a lot with animation. To it, it uh, saves you a lot of time. But yeah, it took, it took a while to complete it. Uh, oh, Sienna's got a question. Let me run it over here. Uh, so where did you get your inspiration for all of your creatures and monsters? Because they're just amazing. And like uh, science and I really like biology and um, when I when I'm out of ideas I like to see uh, pictures of plants and fungi and microscopic animals micro microscopic creatures and I really like how they don't look like like anything we see every day and it's like a completely different planet to be, uh, for example, uh, the creatures in the sea, in the deep sea, that's a completely different planet. And they gave me a lot of ideas to create monsters and characters and to think how they would grow and what they would eat, for example. Yep. <laughs> Did you keep all your drafts and like every, like when you started, do you still have the pictures that you like the first sketch you made of um, Sandy or something like that? Yes, of course. Um, I always keep a lot of uh, sketch packs and sketchbooks and that's really important to do. Uh, when I was little, I used to draw a lot, but um, I couldn't keep any of my drawings because they were so many. And my parents, just, they just couldn't find enough space to keep them all. And I feel a little bit sad about it because it would be nice to show my, my childhood drawings. But now that I know that it is important to keep your sketches, I keep them in a very safe place. And when I'm, when I'm looking for ideas or when I have doubts about my process, uh, it is good to uh, to take them and look back. Yeah, look uh, what you used to do and the ideas that maybe didn't work at that time. Maybe it will work later. So yeah, I keep all my sketchbooks. If if you had one piece of advice for an artist who's starting out, um, who, who whether they want to go into illustration or into comics, um, what oh, wow. what might that advice be? Well. Um, I don't know. I like uh, keep drawing. I I know that everyone says that, but it is so important. And and keep a file with your drawings. <laughs> don't don't do what I did. That it was like throwing all those drawings away. Uh, keep them in a file. Keep them in a book in a box, and take a look at them from one so from time to time and see how much you have uh, progressed, uh, evolved. And also, uh, well, you can start like working with your friends and making little uh, comic books, li little scenes. Also, uh, think about uh, writing about your everyday life and things that interest you. It doesn't matter if you don't know too much about it. Uh, it will make you to find out more to research and to read uh, about the things you care about. Cool. Do we have any other questions? 
those guys? Oh, in the back here. I will. We got a dad in the back. Hold. No, but they, they won't be able to hear it on the on the live stream. So, so what inspired the palettes? I mean, the colors are so beautiful. Um, my country, for example, it, it's uh, uh, produces a lot of flowers and um, all the contrast. And when when I'm working with color in front of my computer, uh, I think uh, on an atmosphere I want to show, and I start from it. I mean, if I want to, uh, I seen I seen look as scary or mysterious. Maybe purples and deep blues could work better, and then I start to add more contrast colors to to give some tension in the image. I really like that. I really like uh, to find surprising effects with color that you feel like uh, there's a lot of contrast and brightness. Yeah. Awesome. That was a great question. Um. Anyone else have a, another question? No? OK. Oh, wait, so I've got one more. Who? Oh. Just real quick. Yep. Uh, would you ever consider like publishing an art book or like a like a book of your sketches and content? Yeah, because your stuff's great. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 sorry. Don't, don't apologize. I'm happy to take questions all day. So when you said that you clean up your sketches after the first time that you sketch them, do you do that by erasing them or by copying them, or how do you do that? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't erase my sketches. I, I keep my mistakes, <laughs> which is important. I just copy them, and I make new versions of them. That's what I mean when I say cleaning them. I don't erase my, my drawings at all. I try not to. Yeah, she. Um, uh, you, you saw in the in the pencil page, right? That it was that she used a blue line um, pencil rather than a, a, a graphic a graphite. Uh, you want to talk about because you talked about that a lot. Last yeah, night. sure. Um, well, um, I found out that blue pencils are cleaner. I mean, when when I draw, I tend to uh, smudge my drawings because of the, uh, well, I, I put my hand on the paper and it, at the end it's a lot of smudge everywhere. And, and blue pencils are greasier, so it would stick better to the paper. And I feel that the color is easier to my eyes. And I feel that uh, the mistakes I made, they don't look so bad in, in blue pencil and I can, and it is harder to erase. So I just feel more relaxed with working with blue pencils instead of graphic pencils. And, and after you do the penciling, then you scan it? Yeah. Yeah. And I took it to Photoshop and I do the inking and the coloring in Photoshop. Did that, did that help you? Yeah. Do you have anything? Do you want, you want to ask another question on that? Okay. Cool. Cool. Anyone else? All right, very good. Um, so yeah, so I wanna I wanna really thank Lorena for coming out. I wanna thank her for this book. I think this Nightlights. I think I think this was the best book that we've had yet in the club. I just think it's pretty and it's smart and and by showing all of you guys that all of these this is the largest crowd that we've had to anyone except for Raina, but Raina's Raina. So um, this is I mean so this is this is great that we had this kind of a turnout and I I just I wanna thank you all for coming. And I want to thank Lorena for the book. No, thank you for the invitation and thank you for coming. Um, next month's book. Uh, there you go. Claws are always good. Uh, next month's book, uh, which you, you may have already picked up if you haven't, it's available right now, um, is, uh, is One Trick Pony by Nathan Hale. Uh, Nathan is going to be doing a video call with us on April 9th. And I hope that all of you can come to that. Um, if you guys give us sort of five minutes to reset here, um, then uh, Lorena will be very, very happy to to uh, to sign your books, to do a little drawing for you, 
to answer any questions that you weren't brave enough to answer in, in front of the whole, uh, or ask in front of the whole crowd, because I know some of you have some of those. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank uh, people on the internet uh, who've been watching or who will be watching. Um, that's uh, the February book for the Comics Experience Kids Club, and thank you, son, and thank, thank you, you Lorena. Thank you.